Okay, this is on page four in your packet. Um, properties of limits, finding limits by direct substitution. For many well-behaved functions, evaluating the limit can be found by direct substitution. That means the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals f of c. Um, and this only works for continuous functions, and we'll study continuity in section 2.3. The following theorems describe limits that can be evaluated by direct substitution. Um, so far we've only looked at limits from graphs, now we're going to start looking at limits from equations. And these are just the properties of limits. Um, the limit as x approaches a number of just a number is the number. For example, if you had the limit as x approaches 2 of 4, the answer is 4. Um, if you have the limit as x approaches 3 of x, you fill the 3 in where the x is and you just get 3. Um, if you have two limits being added together, you can split them apart. Um, two limits being multiplied together, you can split them apart and multiply them. Um, if it's being multiplied by a constant, you just multiply it by the answer. Um, if you raise it, you can raise an ex raise a limit to an exponent, and you just raise the answer to an exponent. And you can divide limits, provided that they're continuous functions. So here's some examples. It says use the given information to evaluate the limits as f of x as x approaches c of equals 2 and g of x is 3. So I want the limit as x approaches 3 of 5 times g of x. Now this is the same as I can pull the 5 outside. Okay. Well this piece, the limit as x approaches c of g of x is 3. So I'm just going to replace it and say 5 times 3 is 15. Um, B, I can split this up into the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Well, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is 2. g of x is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. Um, same thing here. I can say that's the limit as x approaches c of f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Well, this one is 2, this one is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Um, same thing again, I can rewrite it and say the limit as x approaches c of f of x over the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Well, the one on the top is 2, the one on the bottom is 3, so it's simply 2 thirds. Easy enough. Now, when dealing with a constant value of c, realize that the properties in the box above basically allow us to evaluate a limit by plugging in the value of c everywhere there's an x. Now, watch your variables. Um, find each limit. Now, this is just direct substitution. All we're going to do is as x goes to 1, we plug the 1 in where the x is. So it's negative 1 squared plus 1. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Um, we plug the 3 in everywhere there's an x. So it would be the square root of 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 4. The square root of 3 plus 1 is the square root of 4, which is 2. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so it's negative 2. Um, as h goes to 0, we plug the 0 in where the h is. So it will be 3 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0. Uh, 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0, plus 0 is 0. And now this one, notice it's h goes to 0. So I'm only going to plug the 0 in where the h is. So it'll be 3x squared minus 2x times 0 plus 5 times 0. Well, that'll just be 3x squared plus 0 plus 0, which is just 3x squared. You didn't plug it in where the x was, only where the h was. Now, if a limit cannot be found using direct substitution, then we will have to use other techniques to evaluate the limit. Um, some functions don't have limits. Sometimes the limit does not exist. Um, if the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit, or if it goes to infinity. It says if direct substitution using yields the meaningless result, 0 over 0, then you cannot determine the limit. Um, and this is called an indeterminate form, and you have to do something else. Okay, you're not done. Um, when you encounter this form, you must rewrite the fraction so that the new denominator does not have zero as its limit. One way is to cancel. Um, these are our three methods. Whoops, 
probably shouldn't mark them out. Sorry about that. Um, our three methods are to cancel factors, factor and cancel, rationalize the numerator, and to just simplify using algebra. Um, it says find the limit. X approaches negative 1. Our first thing we do is fill it in. 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 3 over negative 1 plus 1. Um, that's going to be 2 minus 1. Uh, it's 0 over 0. So we have to do something else. So what we do is we try to simplify it. Because when it has 0 over 0, what it has created is a hole. There's a hole in your graph, and you got to find out where it's going. So what you do to do this is you, let's factor it, um, 2x squared minus x minus 3, uh, negative 1, negative 6, multiplies to give me negative 6, adds to give me negative 1, give me negative 3 and 2, so 2x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 3, group, group, I got an x, 2x minus 3 plus 1, 2x minus 3, so it'll be x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. So I rewrite my limit as the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1, 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. Well, the x plus 1's cancel. Okay, so and then you just fill your negative 1 into what's left. So it'll be 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Okay, um, that's the first method. The second method is if we plug it in, let's start by plugging it in, it'd be the square root of 3 plus 1 minus 2 over 3 minus 3. You always start by plugging it in because if you get a number, you are done. You don't have to do any more work. Um, that'd be the zero, ugh, 0 over 0 again. So we have to do what's called rationalizing the numerator. Okay, and the way we do that, I'm starting my problem again, is we multiply top and bottom by the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. You multiply by what's called the conjugate. Um, all we did was change this sign, top and bottom. Now on the top, and you have to write the limit every time. If you don't write the limit, um, you will lose points, um, especially on the AP test. If you don't carry your limit, um, they mark it wrong from then on. So make sure you write the limit each time. So we're going to fold this. First would be the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1, which is the square root of x plus 1 squared, which actually the square root and the squared cancel, so it just makes it x plus 1. And then plus 2 times the square root of x plus 1 inside, minus 2 square root of x plus 1, last minus 4 over, don't multiply the bottom out, leave it. Okay, equals the limit as x approaches 3. I'm going to clean it up. Um, these cancel out, so it's just x plus 1 minus 4, which is x minus 3 over x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. The x minus 3's cancel away. So, at this point, you're left with the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. And you just take the 3. Now we directly substitute it in. At the point where you substitute it in, you don't have to write the limit anymore. So it'll be the 1 over the square root of 3 plus 1 plus 2, which is 1 over the square root of 4 is 2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. Okay? Um, and that's rationalizing the numerator. The last way is getting a common denominator. We, we always plug our 0 in first, so it'll be 1 over 0 plus 4 minus 1 fourth over 0. So that's 0 over 0. Remember, if you had plugged your 0 in and got a number, you would have been done. Um, so I'm going to do the limit as x approaches 0 of... I'm going to get a common denominator. I'm just going to rewrite my problem. x plus 4 minus 1 fourth over x. Okay, that equals the limit. x approaches 0. Of, 
our common denominator will be 4 and x plus 4. 4 and x plus 4. Okay, so we look and we say, alright, how has it changed from here to here? Well, I had to multiply the bottom by 4. If I have to do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. So that's going to be 4. Um, this one I multiplied by x plus 4. So that will just be x plus 4 and then over x. So clean it up a little bit. I'm hitting my microphone, I'm sorry. That was probably loud. Um, the limit as x approaches 0 of that would be 4 minus x minus 4 because you have to distribute your negative right there over 4 times x plus 4 over x. Write my limit again. So 4 minus 4 is 0. They cancel. So I've got negative x over 4 times x plus 4 and I'm going to rewrite it as divided by x over 1. Because remember, divided by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So times 1 over x. The x's cancel. So it ends up being the limit of negative 1 over 4 times x plus 4. So that's, now I can fill my 0 in negative 1 over 4 times 0 plus 4, which is negative 1 over 16. Okay. And that's where this video is going to stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Um, and we'll make one more video for the last little bit. The end.